Happy Valentine's Day! I'm Gary Brantner of Rendarb Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about comic books I have read, where you can find those comic books, awesome Kickstarters that you should know about, and all sorts of other stuff that entertains me. Entertains me? Yeah, there it is. Um, so, hello! Yeah, it's Valentine's Day right now, and uh, all that fun stuff that that entails. Going out to eat, having dinner with your uh, spouse or loved one, and uh, yeah, today I am wearing an I Heart Boobies shirt. It is the only shirt I own that has a heart on it. So uh, yeah, please don't be offended by that because I know that it does offend some people. I have been told I can't wear this shirt to work, even though they had breast cancer awareness banners all over the place. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, this is a keepabreast.org uh, t-shirt. So I supported them because uh, Breast cancer is not a joke. It is very serious. It is, in fact, uh, taking someone I care very much about uh, out of my life. So uh, support breast cancer awareness in any form or way you can. Keepabreast.org sells these t-shirts. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's get down to uh, what's going on and stuff. Some comic books and whatnot. So, first off I got is a, uh, I had a comment on my last video from Bridgeport Chronicles, who is in fact the person that I interviewed on that last one. So I interviewed uh, Christopher Mayer, and uh, it went pretty well, I think, other than that I lost the video, so I had to re-record it with uh, his comics in the background. Anyway, Bridgeport Chronicles says, thank you for having me on your show. And, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed having Christopher on talking about uh, Vampire Blood Bloodlines, which is go having a Kickstarter right now. I will talk about that more in the Kickstarter corner of my uh, show. But, uh, yeah, it's an awesome comic. I love it, and I can't not talk about it because it's awesome. I love that comic book, all that fun stuff. And, uh, yeah, so... Uh, Speaking of vampires, I make a Peter Pan the Vampire comic book, which you can find on IndiePlanet.com by searching for Brantner, B-R-A-N-T-N-E-R. -E and, uh, yeah, I've tried searching for it with Rentnarb, and it doesn't come up, but it also comes up when you search Peter Pan. So do that, and it'll come up. I have three issues that you can read free digitally and uh, to any device, laptop, phone, tablet, whatever, or you can buy the hard copies. That'll really make me happy. But either way, even if you download the, di the free digital downloads, it helps me, it, keep, it keeps me in the algorithm, and, uh, and I, I love just knowing that someone's downloading my comics. I'd love to hear from you if you do download them. I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, post what you think on uh, your social medias, Twitters, Instagrams, Facebooks, whatever you want. Let me know what you think of my books, because, yeah, they are on IndiePlanet.com. Search for Peter Pan or Brantner. And uh, they're awesome. They're printed by Kablam. So I always get... Uh, I'm always happy with the way they show up and get to my house. And here's running Kickstarter, so I will talk about that later. Alright, so first up, since it's Valentine's Day, I am going to... I have actually figured out like when I was reading uh, all my comics in January a lot of these have to do with love and I thought well February is coming up next month I might as well hold off on telling you about these comics until uh, February so that I could do a Valentine's Day special so first up on my read pile that I read is Sweet Paprika 1 and 2 these are freaking awesome I've been following uh, Mirka and Dolfo on Twitters and Instagrams for a good while now and uh, I fell in love with this comic before it existed it's a freaking awesome book uh, the way she draws this little demon uh, paprika is, is awesome so let me tell you a little about what alright let me give you some credits first uh, so Sweet Paprika is written by Mirka Andolfo and drawn by Mirka Andolfo Colored by Simon Tessuto, lettered by Fabio Emilia, edited by Christian Pasoco, and uh, this is made by Image Comics. 
There are extra covers by, oh, there's one by Peach Momoko, so that's cool. And uh, yeah, so Sweet Paprika is about, uh, she she works at a uh, agency that, uh, let me see here. Oh yeah, that's a really cool picture there. That's an alternate cover, I think, one of the alternate covers. So Paprika is a little demon in a world of demons and angels. And uh, she just works, she's a, she's a boss at an office, and uh, she, she tells everybody what to do. And uh, she doesn't have any love in her life. It's gotten into her head from her uh, father that love is bad and all this and that. And then it's not worth getting, all that fun stuff. But yeah, there's this, uh, there's this angel that comes in every day. He delivers mail, and he's happy. He flirts with everybody. And he tries to flirt with her, and it's not working out. But uh, the whole comic is about their love, them meeting each other and falling in love. So I can't wait to see where it goes from here. And, uh, oh yeah, there it's not safe for work. There's a lot of pages here that I'm going through and I can't show you. And all that fun stuff. Oh yeah, there's an ad for Mercy, which is also by Merca and Dolfo. It's in my read pile, so I'll get to that eventually. Um, but... Yeah, I, I freaking crazy love Sweet Paprika. I'm loving it. Can't, can't wait to read more of it. And, uh, yeah. So let me see. What a, here is Sweet Paprika number two. That is an awesome cover. With, uh, that is the angel's little puppy chomping on her tail. So, as this has the same uh, credits in it. Merca Andolfo is the writer and artist. Simon Tessuto is the colorist, and Fabio Emilia is the letterer, and edited by Christian Pasoko. So, uh, yeah, let me see if I can show you some awesome pages in here. So, here's the angel's dad. The angel's dad is actually a demon, so that's interesting. We'll see where the, what happens with that. And, uh, yeah, there's an awesome picture of him with his dad. But, uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying this storyline, and uh, obviously I'm just barely getting into it with issues one and two here. Um, yeah, I, I'm waiting on number three. It's in the mail coming to me, so can't wait to get that. Let me see if I can show you. Oh, that's not a safe page to show you. Yep, oh yeah, and there's, there's an ad for Unnatural, which I also have coming to me pretty soon in the mail. Also, can't wait to read that one. I've been hearing a lot about it, been seeing a lot of posts about it anyway on uh, the Twitters. So, really good stuff. Basically, uh, yeah, she's she's just kind of stuffy and all the people in the office talk about her behind her back and uh, and she she doesn't know if she'll ever find love. She had a boyfriend once but he uh, he burned her and now she has to represent him in her ad agency. So that's kind of tricky. We'll we'll see where it's going from here. This is a great start to it. I love it. And uh, if you get a chance, have your comic shop pick this up for you. Sweet Paprika. Uh, they are up to issues eight already, and I already have quite a bit of them. I'm just wait. I would have read them all if I wasn't waiting for uh, issue three. But you know, we're where we, the, things are as they are. Mail's being weird, you know and all that fun stuff, but I do have big plans to read this book. I can't wait. I love it. The art is amazing, and uh, it's just, it looks so good. The coloring is amazing, too. Good stuff. Sweet Paprika. Ask your comic shops for it, or uh, go search online for them, and I'm sure you'll find them if you don't have a comic shop available to you. Next up on my read pile, since it's a uh, since we're in the uh, topic of love, I recently got uh, Punderworld from Linda Sedgick. This is amazing. Uh, I've been seeing these on Twitter forever, and I finally got the print version. I love it. I first came across these on Twitter, yes. And, uh, yeah, as I kept seeing more and more uh, tweets about it and stuff, snippets, like, she would uh, post up random pages from... 
Thunder World, which uh, here's a page I've seen her post up a lot of times. So uh, yeah, as soon as I saw uh, her tweet up links about uh, where you could find Thunder World, I ordered me a copy, had it pre-ordered, and uh, and it's one that instead of going to my read pile, this is one that never made it to my read pile. I read it right away the second I got it. This, the credits are uh, Linda Sedgick is the creator, artist, and uh, all the, everything on it. And uh, Katarina Devik is in the credits here as coloring assists. And Ryan Cady is the editor. And Vincent Valentin is the production. So yeah, this is an Image comic also. Came from uh, Image Comics, Top Cow, that fun stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, I freaking love this. This is from the same creator that does uh, Bloodstain that I really love. So it's got that kind of feel for it. In fact, Bloodstain kind of looks a little bit like Hades here. But, oh yeah, it's good stuff. Um, I highly recommend uh, checking out Ponderworld. So good. Uh, the art is amazing. So the story is, uh, it's based on the, uh, the Greek mythology of Hades and uh, Persephone. And so this tells us how Hades meets Persephone and, uh, and uh, he's got an interest in her and he goes to a party, talks to Zeus, and Zeus says, hey man, you need, you need to man up and go ask her out. And, uh, but not knowing who he's talking about, he's like, you, you got, you're interested in someone. And yeah, it's pretty cool. I love the storyline. It's amazing. I might even reread it a bunch of times because it's so awesome. I can't wait till I can buy, uh, the printed version of, um, Plunderworld Volume 2. So, yeah, crazy, amazing story. Love it. I recommend you, uh, contact your comic shops ask them to get it in for you, or if you don't have a comic shop, I recommend you um, you hunt it down on the interwebs and uh, order yourself a copy. Because Plunderworld, amazing stuff, great love story, and uh, great comics. Next up, in the spirit of uh, love stories, I have Sunstone Mercy Volume 7. Sunstone Mercy is by uh, Stefan Sedgik, which you may recognize that name, that is the uh, husband of Linda Sedgik, who did the Punderworld. So the credits on this, Sunstone is, this is Sunstone Mercy Part 2, but yeah, this is Volume 7, yeah, I was correct. Okay, so Stefan Sedgik is the creator, artist, and writer, and Stefan Sedgik does the, uh, cover art and the logo design. Matt Hawkins is the editor. Matt Hawkins is awesome. He edits a lot of stuff that I love. And Vincent Valentin is also an editor. So yeah, so, uh, there, this one is has a lot of not safe for work pages also. Oh my gosh. And I definitely can't show you that page that I, or that page that I came across. So very adult themed. If you're not an adult or uh, old enough to read this stuff, sensitive minds, all that, I don't recommend you picking it up, but amazing art. I mean, I'm always blown away by the Sedgwick's art, either or, uh, Linda and Stefan. But uh, so cool. Um, so this is the story about Anne, who, uh, who is an artist, and her journey into uh, dating a woman who is a uh, tattoo artist and discovering that she has a passion for tattoo art. And uh, they go to they go to concerts together for Marianne, and uh, because Anne's real name is Marianne, but it's awesome. I love it. Good stuff. This art is so good. And uh, yeah, this is another one. I've been reading uh, Sunstone since I discovered it on DeviantArt, and uh, when it became printed, uh, I've chased them all down. I have the entire collection. So good, and uh, let's see, I'm trying to find a safe page to show you. This is also the story. So on top of it being the uh, 
the story of Anne and her past love life. It is also the story of Alan, who Anne loves, and uh, his history with uh, Allie, who is from the original Sunstone. So, really good stuff, and uh, see there, there's Allie right there with Alan. Is it focusing? Yes, that looks pretty good. Yeah, very good art. I mean, it's amazing. And uh, I have a Harley Quinn uh, comic that is drawn by this same person in my read pile. So eventually I'll get to that one too. But uh, yeah, so good. I love it. I mean, the story is always a page turner. This is one that the second I get it from the comic shop, I always have the comic shop order this for me. Second I get it from the comic shop, it doesn't even make it to my read pile. It gets read that month. Uh, that week as soon as I can and uh, yeah it's so good I I can't I've waited long enough to get these books and oh, shoot can't show you any of these pages but uh, the wait is so long that I it, the second I get them I read them I can't do the read pile with these books anytime I get uh, anything from the Sedgix I have to read it right away in fact all of these uh, paprika Punderworld and uh, Sunstone are all ones that I, I read right away. No no waiting for the read pile on them. They're just too good for that stuff. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Yeah, we get more into the history of Allie, Allie and Alan. And it, it's really funny. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of sexiness in there, but there's also a lot of fun stuff going on. Like, because let's face it, sex is funny. It's weird. And... Uh, a lot of weird stuff involved in that and uh, sometimes it, it just, just flat out does not go the way you plan it and that's a lot about what this comic is about next up on my read pile is another one that never ends up in my read pile because uh, I have to read this one the second I get it it is for goodness sake unfortunately this is volume 3 the last volume in the for goodness sake section series and uh, so this will be the last time I get to read these, unless, hopefully, you decide to write some more uh, for goodness sake, because I would like to further uh, explore the world of uh, Thatcher and Rain here. So this is Thatcher and Rain. Let me give you some credits here. For goodness sakes is, for goodness sake, no S, is created by Kaylin Smith. It is written and drawn and colored by Kaylin Smith. Edited by Mandy Robertson, and special thanks to Jared Houghton. And oh yeah, I just no check, noticed on there, I've got an autographed copy. So I got this one from Kickstarter. It's awesome, and uh, whoops, something's falling out of there. Yeah, I love this book. It's so good, and uh, the, the art is amazing in this. Uh, Thatcher is cursed. Uh, he did something wrong. And he is cursed to have red skin and horns, as you can see here. And uh, the meaner he is, the redder and stronger he is. But uh, the nicer he is, uh, he get he starts looking human again. And uh, and Rain decides one day that she's going to try and help him with this. But unfortunately, she finds out that. Uh, Thatcher might be involved in the death of one of her loved ones, and uh, and she has a hard time dealing with that. But then, as you get more into the story, you find out what actually happened and uh, what's going on. And he's doing his best to uh, redeem himself. And he does, in my opinion, uh, he redeems himself pretty well. But yeah, I, I would very 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 much love to see this story keep can continue on because it is amazing the art is amazing and it made me cry I'm, I'm not gonna lie uh, I'm I'm a I was an emotional wreck reading this at plasma and uh, whew, it was fun stuff um, yeah really good stuff I ought to show you the extras that came with it because man it is so awesome uh, so here is a sticker of Rain and Thatcher together. And here is just a sticker of Thatcher. He says, it says no right next to him. 
That's pretty cool. Love it, and uh, love this bookmark that came with it. Sitting on a, they're having a picnic together, laying on a picnic blanket. Looks like he's asleep, and uh, yeah, really good stuff. Oh yeah, and I also got the pin with this one. It's their little dog. It's Rain's little dog, so that's a, it's a pretty big pin too. It's about two, maybe, yeah, two inches long. Two inches tall anyway. So it's some, one of these days to church, I'll be wearing that on my tie. That'll be good. Or I'll let my boy Johnny wear it. Johnny and Jack love wearing my tie tags to church along with me. So that'll be cool. I'll do that. And uh, so, yeah, that, that leaves us at the end of our reviews. Very good stuff. And uh, now I'm going to move on to the section of my show that I call Mailbox. Red Narves Mailbox, Mailbox, Mailbox. What came in my mail? I got a lot of good stuff in the mail lately, so let me start with uh, the most recent that I got in the mail is a book called Science. It's a it's a little bit smaller than a regular comic book. Let's see? Whoop! There we go. Match them up. But uh, yeah, I have no problem with comics coming in different sizes, as you know from uh, my love of uh, Vampire Bloodlines. Stuff like that, and Rust. Rust is a really good one that comes in a smaller size. But Science here is by uh, a favorite podcast of mine, uh, the Geek History Lesson Podcast. And I recommend you find Geek, Geek History Lesson Podcast on your uh, Stitchers or iTunes and uh, listen to them because, yeah, I love them. Uh, they, uh, re they recently did a, an episode where uh, they talked about uh, the Titans and stuff like that. Well, I don't know. That wasn't recent. Maybe I was listening to an old one. Anyway, uh, yeah. But I'm still waiting for them to do a geek history lesson on my favorite character, the Multiple Man from X Factor. Please do that one. I'm waiting for that one. But Science Here uh, is a book by them I was checking out. Uh, they have a Kickstarter going right now for Super Best Friend, and I noticed they had this in the add-ons. And I figured instead of adding on, on I'm going to, I can't wait for it. I just ordered it now. So I'm going to check this one out. I think I remember hearing about this one way back when I used to listen to Seattle Geekly. I think they talked about this comic. And uh, there are podcasts that have since then, a good while ago, just ceased to exist. And uh, But I, I still remember their episodes and stuff like that. They were awesome. Good people. And uh, yeah, so that's from my mailbox. This is not really from my mailbox, but uh, I recently did a, a pickup at my comic shop, Gamers Asylum in Ogden, Utah. They're a little bit of ways. Uh, it's about a two-hour drive to go get them, so I don't go down to Ogden very often. Uh, but when I do, I get some good stuff. I found this one, Amazing Spider-Man, volume 15. It's continuing on with the uh, Sin Eater saga which i'm not really into but whatever and i picked up the guardians of the galaxy volume three this is a used copy so i got it at a little bit of lower price than usual good stuff and i found a used copy of paper girls volume six i'm not sure if i've read volume five yet so i gotta hunt that that one down before i can read this one. Oh, and i picked up my hold which had a lot of sweet paprikas in it. So I got sweet paprika four, five, six, a special six with a uh, pink sketch cover, and a seven. So I just, I'm still waiting on, uh, I got number three coming to me in the mail because my comic shop had an issue getting it to me. So uh, I had to find it elsewhere. But as soon as I get issue three, I can read this, Three to seven. Can't wait for that. And I will hold on to this uh, sketch cover for someday. Hopefully I'll be able to meet Mirka at a Comic-Con. And uh, I'll ask her to draw me a little quick little angel on it or something. That'll be awesome. So, yeah. Can't wait to read those. I don't know if I'm going to... I'll just keep those on the side until issue three comes up. No uh, read pile for that one. i got to read it right away. 
and recently from the mailbox I got Vampire Emmy and the Garbage Girl. Oh my gosh, and this got spot finish on it. That it makes it look so freaking pretty. Oh yeah, can't wait for that. Cause yeah, Vampire Emmy and they got it. This came with a postcard for Prison Witch, which is on Kickstarter right now. And I'm back in that one. In fact, I'm reading that one right now, uh, Prison Witch Volumes 1 and 2. I, re I read Volume 1 the other night, and I'm reading Volume 2 uh, pretty soon at Plasmid. And I will tell you all about what I think of those, but man, I'm loving where it's going. It's a good storyline. I can't wait to re uh, read Issue 3 that's on Kickstarter right now. But yeah, uh, Vampire Emmy here. Really good stuff, with illustrated by Roberta in Granada and let's see here oh yeah and uh, Carola Carola Borelli which I freaking love her stuff so yeah very good stuff Vampire Emmy I have a single issue of this from a long time ago that uh, I love so I can't wait to read this one and find out more I might even uh, throw that not put that in the read pile but read that right away as well because I love that stuff. Pat Shand, he does an amazing work uh, writing stuff. This one also came in the mailbox recently. Cult Heroes Stories. So yeah, if you, as you know, I've been uh, backing Cult Heroes for a good while. And uh, that uh, Raymond Estrada, he does some amazing art. His coloring style just blows me away. Can't wait to read that one. This one I got from a friend. He gave it to me because I lent him all my Spider-Man DVDs. Uh, he's currently uh, at home taking care of his father who has uh, come under the weather a little bit. And uh, so, yeah, I lent him all my Spider-Man's DVDs, let him, give him something to watch while he's taking care of his dad. And uh, he gave me this as a thank you. So, yeah, War Machine, hardcover, volume one. Thank you, Brooke, for giving me that. And uh, recently I did an order from, um, oh man, I'm blanking, oh, Scout Comics, yes. I recently did an order from Scout Comics and uh, got some awesome stuff from them. I got Metal Shark Bro number one, which I heard a lot about from other podcasts, so I thought I'd give it a shot and try out. And uh, Cherry Blackbird number one was... I got an awesome cover. I love this green cover. It, it's really cool. It makes me think of a, one of those rock posters for an indie band that you would find plastered on a wall. So that was cool. And I've always been interested in Grit. So I got Grit Volume 1, the trade paperback, to read from uh, Scout Comics, which makes White Ash really cool stuff. Do they all say White Ash on them? Nope. But yeah, Scout Comics. I'm loving their stuff. I could have swore I ordered four, but this is only three books. I don't know. That's weird. Maybe I misplaced one. And, uh, yeah. And also, I, what I got from the mailbox, I got this book. It's a Kickstarter for the Independent Creator. And uh, this is from uh, M. Holly Rosing, which she is one of the creators of uh, the Boston Metaphysical Society comic and uh, I, I've had my eye on that one for a good while and uh, never backed it but I'm thinking that I think she's gonna be uh, launching a Kickstarter in the April month and uh, the April month the month of April and when she does that maybe I'll do the catch-up tier and get all of them because uh, I was noticing I found her on Etsy and uh, there she has a page where I can buy all those books all her volumes Five volumes for 55 bucks, I think it was, which is not a bad deal. And uh, anyway, but I think it'd be a lot better if I get him on the Kickstarter, help her out there. So as soon as I see that launch, or even as soon as I see the notify me on launch, I will start telling you about that. But uh, yeah, I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for uh, Boston Metaphysical Society launching in April. Check out that, but I'll be reading this in some downtime. And I also got another book about Kickstarters. This is The Complete Kickstarter Playbook by Will Terry. Will Terry is a local here in Utah, lives in the same state as me. And uh, I bought a book, one of his textbooks before. 
and uh, what they don't teach you in our school is the book and uh, I thought this one would be cool. I do need to know a little bit more about launching on Kickstarter and uh, I'm pretty close to finishing uh, one of my comics so I gotta get busy on that, get it done and get it on Kickstarter and hopefully I will have both of these books read by the time I go to launch and uh, will be a little bit more uh, Kickstarter savvy and know stuff and whatever. And I also have my daughter working on a book, um, The Mermaids of Neverland, which will tie into my Peter Pan of the Vampire comics. And uh, so when she finishes drawing that for me, I will run a Kickstarter for that. And it, if it does really well, I, I will pay her extra bonuses and stuff for that. So I'm, I'm excited to, to do that. I'm trying to set, help her set up a Patreon page right now so that people... Because she has a pretty good following of people watching her drawing and stuff and she does a lot of cosplay every morning for school she goes to school and cosplay it's kind of funny because the principal will call me up and say hey did you know your daughter's dressed up as uh something from five nights at freddy's and this and that and i'm like yeah and he's like are you sure you saw her she had ears on and this and that and i'm like yeah i saw her before she left for school and i'm like what about it is there a rule against it and he's like no just wanted you to let you know and so I don't know, I think he was trying to get me to say, hey, stop letting her come to school dressed up, but I'm like, as long as there's not a rule against it, let her. And anyway, so that's where I'm at. I got a lot of fun stuff. My read pile just keeps growing. I even have tons of comics coming, lots of stuff coming that I can't wait to read. And uh, yeah, oh yeah, in fact, this is up on my read pile pretty soon. I've actually already read it, but I will talk about it later since... Um, this is not really a love story, but it was an awesome read, so I will talk about that next week. And uh, there is a Kickstarter coming up pretty soon. In fact, by the time I'm finished uh, recording this, I think that Kickstarter will be available. And uh, I will be back in that, so I'll tell you all about that right now as I get to the campaign corner. Campaign Corner, yeah! What is on Kickstarter and Indiegogo right now? So, I'm going to tell you all about what is on Kickstarter right now. I actually don't have any Indiegogo ones to tell you about. It's just how it is. Nobody ever, uh, I never get any emails from them saying what's going on. So, I, I don't know. What's going on there? And I actually have been seeing a lot of new ones from this thing called Zoop. But uh, I don't know how that works yet. I saw one that interested me. But then I got on there and looked at it. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. So I didn't back it. Anyway, I'll figure that out eventually, maybe. We'll see. But right now, on Kickstarter, what you need to know about is a comic called Mechaton 1 and 2. It is on Kickstarter right now. A real... A rule of... Why does it say that? A rule of comic... Oh my gosh. Alright, let me start over. Mechaton 1 and 2 is a rule of cool comic with mechs and kaiju. Basically, uh, there's a slacker artist and uh, a slacker and his artist best friend come across this glove. And whatever you touch turns into a mecha suit. And uh, it is... Uh, anyway... So they live in a world where kaijus are coming up out of the ocean all the time and uh, they can take care of it if they they touch a clock or a hot dog stand and it turns into a mech suit and it, in fact these are examples of things that they do touch and become mech suits. So it looked really cool and I'm actually unfamiliar with it so I'm getting the catch up tier 1 and 2 together. Check out Mechaton 1-2 one and two together on Kickstarter right now. It is currently at 120%, so if you back it, you are definitely going to get your books. So check it out. Mechaton, it ends on February 16th. That is in two days. Better get on that, guys. Toddler Apocalypse is on Kickstarter right now. It is a 64-page anthology about the hardest part of surviving an apocalypse. Kids. So yeah, if you're you're trying to uh, be quiet because there's some monsters coming out and searching for food to eat. And uh, so you're telling your kids to be quiet, but they're fighting over who's got 
who's going to hold the teddy bear or something. I mean, if you've got toddlers, you know what I'm talking about. So, uh, yeah, it's crazy. The hardest part of surviving a, a, an apocalypse is having toddlers. And uh, it looks crazy. There is a pin on there. You know I love pins. And uh, the pin is of this weird tentacle alien thing. And So check that one out. The mock-up looks pretty cool. Toddler Apocalypse, 64 pages on Kickstarter right now. At 106% funded, it ends on February 18th. Vampire Bloodlines 4 is on Kickstarter right now. 24 pages of manga-sized comics. Vampires, I mean, who doesn't love vampires? I know I do. Uh, this story will be about the aftermath of the assassination attack from issue 3. There are cosplay covers, and you could actually even get a book of all the cosplay covers together in one book. That looks really cool. Sounds awesome. And uh, it is 300% funded. So if you back it, you're definitely going to be getting your books. Check out Vampire Bloodlines 4 right now. There are awesome prints, everything that you could want. You could get the catch-up tiers if you're new to Vampire Bloodlines. Issues 1 to 4, all of them together. Thistleheart, number one, is on Kickstarter right now. The Three Ravens. It is a dark fantasy comic featuring seductive witches, ebon blades, magic potions, and a terrifying monster with a human soul. Thistleheart, number one, is on Kickstarter right now until February 21st. It is 584% funded. That is amazing. You are definitely going to get your books if you fund that, back that one. So check it out. February 21st is when it ends. Get on that. Dancer 1 and 2 is on Kickstarter right now. I recently did a review of da The Dancer on uh, a couple episodes back. It was very awesome. I loved it, and so I jumped on here, back number 2 as quick as I could. So, a dancer assassin is forced to deal with her childhood trauma of witnessing her parents' murder. It's 22 pages of a uh, colored comic. Mia must face the fact that she has now become the villain of her own story. It has, there is also an, a Kaylin Smith option. You can get a Kaylin Smith cover. That is the uh, creator that made For Goodness Sake. So if you love that art, you can get one of those from the dancer. And yeah, awesome stuff. Check out The Dancer 1 and 2 on Kickstarter right now till February 24th. It is at 178% funded. Adept number 2 is on Kickstarter right now. You can get both issues along with the catch-up tier. So it, in the return of this epic Shaolin series, Amy deals with the fallout after a mysterious attack on the international pop star Sasha Tu. So in the first issue, uh, Amy was at a concert with her sister, watching. she was waiting to see Sasha True come out and sing, and uh, all these assassins, a terrorist attack come out, and uh, they threaten her, and so she jumps in with some kung fu that she learned in a dream. She'd been learning kung fu from this master in the dreamscape all this time, and uh, yeah, she used it really well. It was awesome. It was crazy. And now the second issue is coming out. I love it. I can't wait to read it. 44 pages of awesomeness. Oh man. 194% complete funded right now until February 24th. So you better get on that one. Alicia Carter is on Kickstarter right now. And uh, it is a space story about a girl that crash lands on a planet called Junk World. And she doesn't know anything about why she's there, has amnesia, but she has a robot helping her. So check out an action-a-minute pulp sci-fi series about a girl and her robot. Full color, 28 pages comics. The preview pages are what sold me. After I read those pages, I jumped in on it and backed it. It is currently 291% funded, and it goes till February 27th. A Vampire Detective in Space, number one. I mean, everything about that sounds awesome. A vampire in space, and he's a detective. And it's made by the creators of uh, Unicorn Vampire Hunter. So I'm already, I already know I'm going to love it. A detective story about a vampire living in space with his snarky AI companion. So think, uh, 
think Spider-Man 2099 with his uh, Lila, or um, Booster Gold with his uh, little robot that floats around him. So check it out. They're solving crimes that the cops can't figure out. And I'm also, I also have an add-on of the sticker bundle. There's this like True Blood serum that they drink. And so basically it's like he grabs a Mountain Dew made out of blood, drinks it, and he doesn't have to kill people. Unfortunately, this comic is only 85% funded. So I want you, really, really, really badly want you to jump on board. Help that get up to 100% so that I could get my copy. And uh, all that. So check out Vampire Detective in Space 1 on Kickstarter right now till February 28th. Really. Go on there, help me out, help me get it. Because I really want this book. Loot, number two, is on Kickstarter right now. Uh, last, the last episode of reviews, I reviewed Loot number one. Loot number one is drawn by Kaylin Smith. Wow, that name just keeps popping up. So, uh, Loot number two, it's about a, it's about a girl that, uh, She's always been interested in finding artifacts, things that are lost, and uh, Loot 2 is exactly that. Uh, so she finds out in Loot number 1, she, uh, she's looking for this lost gold, Aztec gold, and she thinks she knows where it is. And uh, there are all these uh, websites that are showing you clues and stuff, and she's figured it out. So check out Loot number 2. Emily Jackson continues her search for the lost treasure of Montezuma. And, uh, let's see. Unicorn, the source, and the mall. Oh, from the same creators. Uh, loot 2. Is, you could also get uh, Loot 1 and 2 with your uh, funding. Oh, sorry. I'm spacing out here. Anyway, Loot 2 is at 142% funded. So that means if you back it, you're going to get your book. It ends on February 28th. Check out Loot 2. Area 51 is on Kickstarter right now. The Helix Project, 1 through 4. Um, I'm new to this project, so I'm getting the catch-up tier. 1, 2, 3, and 4. So haunted by the death of his father, a child of two worlds gets dragged into the extraterrestrial conspiracy of the Helix Project. So we're following a guy, and I think his name is Clark, which uh, I love that, or his name's Kent. Sorry, I'm thinking Clark Kent, Superman. So basically it's a Superman story, but what if this alien uh, was hi hiding among us, uh, didn't have the same upbringing and all that fun stuff, and things were going bad. So check out Area 51, The Helix Project, 1 through 4 on Kickstarter right now. It is 112% funded. You will get your books if you back this one. And it ends on February 28th. Super Best Friend Issue 2 is on Kickstarter right now. So if you are unfamiliar with Super Best Friend, I recommend you go back a couple uh, episodes of my show and see what I thought of epi uh, Super Best Friend number 1. It was an awesome read. I loved it. The art is amazing. And uh, yeah, so it is a superhero adventure comic. A live streamer sidekick um, of the world's greatest superhero must protect his best friend's secret identity. So in the first issue, uh, he accidentally left his phone on while he was live streaming and uh, accidentally leaked out his favorite superhero's uh, secret identity. So now the whole world knows it. His, his worst arch enemy knows th his secret identity and he threatens his parents. He comes and threatens his, his co-workers. Everything. So the whole world now knows who uh, the superhero Terri Captain Terrific is. All because of uh, this live streamer. And so he's got to redeem himself. Fix it all. This is 44 pages of comic book. It is rad. Check out the uh, preview pages if you don't believe me. But man, it's good stuff. And yeah, you could... Uh, you could add on other comics from the same world, uh, Jupiter Jet, Science, that I just showed you from my mailbox, and uh, yeah, Jupiter Jet's another awesome comic from the same group. These are from, uh, this is from uh, Jawin on uh, Geek History Lesson. So check out Super Best Friend 1 and 2. It's an amazing read. I love it. I can't wait for more. And uh, 
It is 157% funded right now. It ends on March 3rd. Wow, that's that's good ways away. So, Prison Witch Volume 3 is on Kickstarter right now. Man, I am really loving Prison Witch. I started reading Volume 1, finished it, loved it. I'm going to be reading Volume 2 really soon. Can't wait to read that. And, uh, yeah, it's from Pat Shand. Very good stuff. Uh, this is... Prison Witch Volume 3 is the finale of the series. So there won't be any more. The final volume of the Prison Witch Trilogy is here. Magic and mystery combine in this thrilling graphic novel. So uh, this poor girl, she has, she has a spirit, a fire spirit in her. And uh, she ends up in prison after burning someone. And when she gets to prison, like it's not all great. Like prison sucks. And she's trying to keep her head down, keep to herself, but unfortunately, uh, things get heated. The fire spirit comes out, and it makes some trouble for her. Then she, some other witches in the they have a coven going in the prison, and they try and uh, get her to join the coven. And it's just crazy, a lot of crazy stuff going on, and uh, yeah, prison fights prison rivalries, all sorts of crazy stuff going on in the story. It's great stuff, though. Amazing. It's uh, grayscale color, coloring, and uh, it just makes it look amazing. I always love Pat Shan's stuff. Uh, I'm getting to the point where if I see his name on anything, I'm back in it. Because, let's face it, I'm never going to be disappointed. I love it. So keep them coming. Prison Witch Volume 3 on Kickstarter right now until March 4th. 181% completed, funded right now. This is one that I just barely backed this morning. Drumsticks of Doom, number one. It's on Kickstarter right now. Uh, a heavy metal comic. It is a one-issue wonder. Is it a one-issue wonder or an ongoing opera? Rock opera. That's up to you, the backers. Because, yeah, if this doesn't get funded, it probably won't get see another issue. So it's a, it's a world where Black Sabbath was the world's most famous band in, instead of the Beatles. And so the lost arts of alchemy were made common. Schools are taught the transfiguration and alternate sciences. Demons were summoned that didn't go back to uh, hell or the underworld. They stuck around. So Lana's love for music uh, brings her in contact with some magic drumsticks and werewolves. So check this out. This also has a Kaylin Smith cover, which I backed it and I'm getting the Kaylin Smith cover. It is by Beardo Comics, um, Dan Doherty, who uh, draws an awesome comic called Touching Evil that I freaking love. So uh, yeah, I'm fully on board with this one. I'm getting the add-on where I, I get some a sticker and some guitar picks because I have two teenage daughters that uh, play guitar, and so I'm going to pass on a guitar pick to each of those, and uh, it's going to be awesome. Can't wait to see this one. It is black and white comic, and it is 89% funded, so that means it also needs your help. Jump on this one, help me get up to 100% so I can get my copy, get my drumsticks, my sticker, and uh, my dooms, my drumstick, or I'm not getting drumsticks, I'm getting uh, guitar picks. That'd be awesome, though, if they sent drumsticks, too. Makes sense. Um, so, Drumsticks of Doom. One on Kickstarter right now. 89%. Please help it out. It's on there until March 12th. Bloom Pretty is one I backed this morning. A fantasy comic for a mature audience. A story of romance, murder, and plant people. I mean, how could that go wrong? A standalone tale setting up a fantasy world that has been brewing in the back of Lisa Fowler's brain for years now. Featuring an all-female creative team, 56 pages in color. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. That is awesome. And Car Carola Borelli is one of the artists on it. She does Prison Witch, Destiny New York, Deadliest Bouquet, and Love University. A lot of things that I love, and so I can't wait to see that. I'm back in it, but it is only at 24%, but you know what, it just launched this morning, so what do you expect? 24% funded, I'm sure it'll be 100% in a week, because it's got a great awesome team. It ends on March 16th, so that is a whole month away. 
And We Love You is on Kickstarter right now. And We Love You is the continuation of Commander Rao, which I am currently reading. So it is from the world of award-winning Commander Rao stories comes a story about life, death, and a girl who bleeds memories. I think that is launching today, so after I post this video, you might see me post that I just barely backed And We Love You. So check out And We Love You coming soon, I think today, right, on Kickstarter. Starside is coming to Kickstarter soon. Starside is a series that I've been loving so crazy much since I discovered it on Twitter. After being ripped away from a home, from his home, during an alien invasion, Jack searches for a way back to Earth in this compelling space opera, launching tomorrow. So yeah, you will also see me po tweeting about that I backed this one. So check out Starside the comic on Kickstarter coming soon. And uh, yeah, I will post links to every one of these that I've talked about on my Twitter. So make sure you're following Rentnarb on Twitter to see all these links to every Kickstarter I've mentioned and the comics I've reviewed. Sacrifice 1 through 3 is on Kickstarter right now. Oh, wait. Sacrifice 1 through 3 is coming to Kickstarter soon. It is Magic, Monsters, and Mayhem. And all... Okay, Magic, Monsters, and Mayhem can all be found in this 32-page issue of Sacrifice. So I'm going to be checking out that one. I'm new to it, so if the preview pages grab me, I will be jumping on board for 1, 2, and 3. Tart Volume 2 is coming to Scout Comics soon, so as soon as uh, it hits previews, I will drop you the code for that, let you know how to get it. You could go on Scout Comics right now and pick up Tart Volume 1. I highly recommend it. It was an amazing read, amazing art, and uh, the story just blew me away. So check out Tart Volume 2 coming soon. Get yourself Tart Volume 1 from, Kick from Scout Comics right now. If you do it today, you get a special Valentine's sale on it. So check that one out. And uh, follow, find Scout Comics on Twitter to see their Valentine's promo code. I think it's uh, VAL or VD 2020, 2022. I don't know. Check it out. Find Tart Volume 1 on Scout Comics right now. I recommend it. And that brings me to the end of uh, my Kickstarters. So, uh, tell me about your campaigns. If there's one that I didn't mention, uh, let me know about it. Send me a link. Email it to me at peterpanthevampire at yahoo.com. Or direct message me from the Facebooks or the Twitters or Instagrams, whatever. Or even comment, comment uh, under the video on YouTube, whatever. Um, but I, I do want to know about your comics. I mean... I can never have too many comics. My read pile is going nuts on me. And uh, whatever. Just let me know about your Kickstarter. I will drop you a shout out even if I'm not backing it. But chances are I'll probably back it. And so yeah. If you're running a campaign or even if you have a comic coming soon to uh, Indie Planet or your own store, Etsy, whatever. Tell me about it. I'll check it out. Give you a shout out. And uh, yeah. Because I love hearing about it. All that stuff. And whatever comment, you, whatever you comment on uh, my YouTubes, I will give you a shout out. I will read it out loud. All comments, except for swears, on uh, YouTube, I will read on here. And don't be rude. I won't, I won't read anything racist or anything like that either. So what am I watching right now on, uh, on the shows? I, me and my wife, we just finished up The Great. I'm so sad because that was a good show, and now we don't have anything to watch. Uh, really. I've been watching Peacekeeper. That's amazing. But I can't watch that one with my wife. She's a little sensitive over the swears. And uh, I've been watching, uh, which is weird because we were watching The Great. Anyway, uh, and I'm watching Emily in Paris with my wife. That's a good show. It's interesting. It's not really amazing, but it's great. It's interesting. But uh, Outlander is going to be starting next month, so I'm excited for that. So, uh, that brings me to Patreon. I've had a Patreon page for a good while. I currently have no followers, but 
I would not be too sad to announce you as my favorite first uh, back, backer on Patreon. So check me out on Patreon if you like what you're seeing. Uh, throw me a dollar a month and uh, tell me I'm doing a great job. What that'll get you is that uh, I will hold up a card that says your name on it and I will say thank you Gary Brantner for following me on Patreon. This is where you can find Gary Brantner on Twitter and Facebook. So I will print one of those up with your name on it and your socials and whatever, however you want me to uh, shout your name out as long as it's not swears because I'm trying to keep this show clean and whatever, you know. And uh, yeah, so that brings me to the end of my show. Yep, that's it. That's the end of my notes. And uh, thank you for watching. Please, 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 if you do have a Kickstarter that you're running or that someone you like is running and you think I should know about it, you think I should talk about it, hit me up, uh, message me on the socials, or send me an email at peterpanthevampire at yahoo.com and tell me that you want me to check out this uh, campaign. Because, you know what, I could always leave... I could always use some awesome stuff to read, and uh, I won't turn you down. I'll love it. I'll read it. I'll check it out. Whatever. So thank you for watching Gary Brantner on YouTube of, uh, you yeah, oh man, messing up my own name. Thank you for watching Gary Brantner of Rent and Arbor Studios. Thank you for watching Gary Brantner of Rent and Arbor Studios Comics. And uh, I better stop before I get too far into the flubs. Bye!